Understand this about the millionaire gladiators of professional golf. Big money is second nature. There is little pressure in the single stroke difference between 60 and $100,000. But honor, pride, and country are bigger forces, forces which in the unique golfing arena of the Ryder Cup search the souls of these refined technicians for more primal proof of their greatness. It is Ryder Cup pressure and Ryder Cup pressure alone which reduces done-all, seen-all Lanny Watkins to public tears of relief in victory. It is Ryder Cup pressure and Ryder Cup pressure alone which cruelly decrees the magnificent career of Bernhard Langer be defined by a single missed putt. It is Ryder Cup pressure and Ryder Cup pressure alone which alternately ravages and then redeems the incomparably gifted Fred Couples. And it is Ryder Cup pressure and Ryder Cup pressure alone which rescues a fading Seve Ballesteros and places him back at the ultimate pinnacle of his sport. The Ryder Cup competition pits 12 Americans and 12 Europeans in head-to-head -head matches in the final showdown for the modest trophy which produces golf's deepest and most tormenting passions. It was Englishman Sam Ryder's 1927 dream come true. Great Britain against the United States in a biennial golf competition won by the home team each time until the post-war emergence of American stars who dominated their sport and the Ryder Cup. In 1979, the British entry was supplemented by continental European golfers, and as these personalities flourished, the balance of power swung. In 1985, at an English Midlands course called the Belfry, Europe uncorked the champagne for the first time in 28 years. Americans lost again in 1987 and tied in 1989, when a cavalcade of Yanks failed at the Belfry's treacherous finishing hole. But 1991 brought American revenge, as a gut-wrenching finish at Kiowa Island, South Carolina, brought the Ryder Cup back across the Atlantic Ocean. Now it's back to the Belfry and into a hornet's nest of European hopes and dreams as Ryder Cup 1993 arrives. NBC Sports and the PGA of America proudly present Ryder Cup 1993 Showdown at the Belfry. Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. The Belfry is the most storied of Ryder Cup venues. It was here in 1985 that the Europeans cast off nearly three decades of frustration and lifted the Ryder Cup from the United States team. It was here in 1989, four years later, that an American team loaded with young talent suffered a collective collapse at the 18th hole. The demons from which haunted those young American stars and for a long time cast shadows over their budding careers. Those same young stars now form the nucleus of the American team that brought the cup back to the United States in 1991 and now will try to defend it once again against many of the same Europeans who celebrated here at the Belfry in 1985 and 1989. For the 1993 U.S. team, Ryder Cup week begins with a visit to the White House at the invitation of President Clinton. There, the American team presents the first golfer with a Ryder Cup team bag. It was just a great day, you know, to be able to see Washington and to get into the White House right next to the Oval Office. And, you know, President Clinton was just tremendous to us. He took time and talked to everybody just face to face, eye to eye. You know, really seemed very sincere. And I mean, it was, it was an excellent morning, something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Then it's on to Birmingham, England via Concord in a little over three hours. First to greet his teammates is Fred Couples, who came to Europe a week early to compete in a professional event in France. Waiting outside the airport, a large contingent of fans who have fond memories of team captain Tom Watson, a five-time British Open winner. On to golf, and for some, a first look at the Brabazon course at the Belfry. The Europeans seem relaxed amid familiar surroundings. Semi Ballesteros shows he can reach the par 4 10th from the tee. No problem. Okay. No, no. The Ryder Cup teams 
from the United States of America and Europe. Thursday afternoon, spectators and players gather for the official opening ceremonies and formal introductions of both teams. I believe this type of competition remains the essence, not only of golf, but of all sports. By Friday morning, everyone is eager for competition, but heavy fog causes a delay of over two hours. Finally, at 10.30, the first group makes its way to the first tee. When Corey Pavin strikes his opening tee shot, the 30th Ryder Cup matches are underway. Corey Pavin is one of eight Ryder Cup veterans on Tom Watson's team. Fred Couples, Payne Stewart, and Paul Azinger were all at the Belfry in 1989. Raymond Floyd was the captain of that team. Now he's a player at age 51, along with tested veterans Tom Kite, Lanny Watkins, and Chip Beck. And four Ryder Cup rookies round out the American team. Davis Love, US Open champion Lee Jansen, Jim Gallagher, and John Cook. European captain Bernard Gallagher retains the nucleus of the team that held the cup from 1985 to 1991. Seve Ballesteros and Jose Maria Olathabal form an almost unbeatable pairing in foursomes and four balls. Nick Faldo and Bernard Langer have won at the game's highest levels. Other veterans on Gallagher's team include Welshman Ian Woosnam, Scotsman Sam Torrance, and Colin Montgomery, and England's Mark James. The four rookies include the first ever competitor from Italy, Constantino Rocca, and Sweden's first Ryder Cupper, Joachim Hegman. England's Barry Lane and Peter Baker are local favorites. Friday's schedule calls for four morning foursomes matches to be followed in the afternoon by four four-ball matches. On Saturday, Friday's schedule will be repeated. And on Sunday, 12 singles matches will be played, one American playing one European in each. 28 matches in all. Each match counts for one point. A match that is tied or halved gives a half point to each team. 14 and a half points are needed for the overall win, but in the event of a 14-all tie, America retains the cup. Friday morning's matches are foursomes, also known as alternate shot. Each team consisting of two golfers hitting alternate shots. Team members also alternate hitting tee shots. The team with the best score wins the hole, and should there be a tie for best score, that hole is halved. In the day's first pairing, Watson sends out veterans Lanny Watkins and Corey Pavin against the hero of Europe's win at the Belfry in 1985, Sam Torrance, and England's Mark James. Torrance puts his side one up at the fifth, knocking in a short birdie putt. In the second group, Ian Woosnam and Bernard Langer get off to an early lead as Paul Azinger and Payne Stewart bogey the first three holes. But at the fourth, Stewart takes charge. Swim. Stewart's wedge eagle from 111 yards out still leads the Americans two down. In the day's third match, Tom Kite and Davis Love III take on the formidable Spanish team of Seve Ballesteros and Jose Maria Olazabal. Love gets his team off to a good start with a beautiful approach at the par four second. Birdie there puts Kite and Love one up. And in the final group of the first morning, Raymond Floyd and Fred Couples, a team which contributed so much to the Americans' win at Kiowa, take on Nick Faldo and Colin Montgomery. Montgomery is rumored to be Faldo's partner by default. In a disappointing performance at Kiowa, Faldo scarcely talked to his playing partners. But Montgomery is playing well and happy with his pairing. We get on, on and off the course, and we communicate quite well, and that's important. Uh, you can't play Ryder Cup uh, foursomes or four balls with somebody you don't communicate with. And uh, we both have a similar temperament, a similar sort of individuality towards the game, and, uh, and paired together, we can bring that together. Faldo finishes off Montgomery's fine approach at the fourth, making the birdie putt to go one up on Floyd and Couples. Elsewhere, Americans are struggling. Tom Kite with an uncharacteristic miss to lose the fifth hole. But he and Love are still one up. At the eighth, Stewart's troubles with the driver continue. Oh, 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 oh. 
In the water, Stewart and Azinger trail five down. At the par three seventh, Kite needs a short birdie putt to have the Spaniards. And on the short par four tenth, Lanny Watkins begins a rally. Watkins birdie putt gives him and Pavin a three up edge over Torrance and James. Meanwhile, playing behind Watkins, Stewart is three down and has no choice but to go for the 10th green, a carry of some 235 yards over water. Stewart and Dazinger are unable to rally and go down to a seven and five defeat. At the eighth, Montgomery. The chip in puts his team two up. At the 10th tee, Kite goes for it. The gutsy tee shot puts the pressure on the Spaniards. Seve Ballesteros responds with this birdie try. No player has been more responsible for Europe's Ryder Cup successes, and the crowd shows its appreciation. But Love still has a chance at Eagle to win the hole. Davis Love is the only Ryder Cup rookie to play on this first morning, but he's more than equal to the task. At the 15th, Corey Pavin holds the short par putt to close out the team of Torrance and James. Now just two matches are still alive. On the 14th tee, Colin Montgomery. Montgomery's excellent tee shot will set up a birdie attempt by Nick Faldo. the birdie and Floyd and Couples are closed out on the next hole by a one-sided score of four and three. Height and Love continue to hold off the Spaniards. Finally on the 17th hole Love with a short par putt ends the match. He and Kite pulled the morning's biggest upset winning two and one. And after four matches it is all even at two points aside. The Belfry Gallery has charted out its favorite spots. There's a big crowd at the first tee to provide a rousing send-off. Others line the fairways 10 deep and more, making sight lines hard to come by. But the most vocal gallery waits at the pivotal 10th hole, the short par four that makes or breaks the fortunes of so many teams. Measuring just 267 yards, the 10th is reachable from the tee, but there are perils. Water guards the front and the left, and trees hang over the right side of the green. Great shots are rewarded with eagle opportunities. Lesser shots are severely punished. First out in the afternoon for Tom Watson, two rookies, Jim Gallagher and Lee Jansen, against Ian Woosnam and hometown favorite Peter Baker from just up the road in Wolverhampton. The second match hits morning winners Watkins and Pavin against Bernhard Langer and Englishman Barry Lane. In the third match, Watson repairs Azinger, now with Fred Couples, against the Faldo Montgomery team. And in the final pairing of the day, a rematch of Love and Kite versus Ballesteros and Ola Thabel. First to face the choice at the treacherous 10th tee, Jim Gallagher. He and Lee Jansen find themselves all square against Woosnam and Baker. <laughs> Gallagher's tee shot sets up a two-putt birdie that puts his team one up. The four afternoon matches are four ball play, meaning that each player plays his own ball. It's the better ball format that amateurs are most familiar with, where only the lower score of the two partners counts. On the 11th hole, Peter Baker tries to answer Gallagher's birdie at number 10. Play it right. Out. 
Baker's great approach sets up a birdie to even the match with just seven holes to play. Helen Montgomery has missed the water and the sand at number 10. He has found an entirely different hazard. It's one of life's embarrassing moments for the Scotsman, but he handles it with humor. It's like a scene right out of Caddyshack. And when Montgomery is finished, there's plenty of housekeeping left to do. Meanwhile, in another match, Corey Pavin is heating up at the 11th. His birdie puts him and Watkins two up over Langer and Lane. Back now to the pivotal 10th, where Paul Azinger has a putt for birdie and a one-up lead. With Montgomery out of the hole, Faldo is unable to match Azinger's birdie. At the 14th, Peter Baker and Ian Woosnam can overtake Gallagher and Jansen. Baker's birdie puts this European pairing one up. Now at the 10th tee, Seve Ballesteros, there's no question he'll go for it. Ballesteros, so inspirational to the European side over the years, actually had to convince his longtime partner Ola Thabel to accept his Ryder Cup invitation as a captain's choice. We didn't talk for long. I mean, there was no need to, to really talk about it uh, for a long time. So it was a little short conversation, but uh, he gave me the confidence that uh, I really needed. And uh, he said to me that, uh, I mean, it would be great, uh, uh, not just for me, just for the whole team to, to, to get me in the team. And uh, that uh, really cheered me up and uh, make, uh, make me uh, decide. Olaf Abel's decision has kept together the most successful team pair in the history of Ryder Cup play. With Ballesteros on the green, Kite must go for it. <laughs> Kite's errant tee shot now puts the pressure squarely on his partner, Davis Love. Also in the water. With his aggressive strategic play, Ballesteros has put the Spanish team two up over Kite and Love. At the 13th, Nick Faldo with a birdie try to get to all square. At the par 3 15th, Corey Pavin has a putt for birdie to go three up with three holes to play. It's good, and another pave and birdie at 16 will close out the match. Peter Baker at the 18th. The afternoon's first match is all square at this final hole. Three rookies are getting their first taste of Ryder Cup pressure and handling it quite well. Jim Gallagher Jr. tries to answer Baker. They'll both have birdie putts. Back at the par 3 14 hole, Ballesteros. Another heroic effort from Seve. Meanwhile, Gallagher has missed his birdie putt at 18 so Baker can win the match. Yeah! 25-year-old Peter Baker earns a hug from Woozy and a look of amazement from Captain Gallagher. There is not a trace of nervousness in the English rookie. Paul Azinger is engaged in a personal duel with Nick Faldo. They're at the par 4 16th. 
Azinger's great pride is being tested by the world's best. And he's been matching Faldo shot for shot. For Azinger, a veteran of the loss in 1989, motivation is no problem. It's a grudge match. I don't think either team you know, hates each other, but I don't think either team really likes each other too much. There's a little animosity that's been stirred up. It's only natural. I mean, there's some guys on this, on the European team that kind of rubbed our nose in it when they were winning. And they're still on the team. And we, we, just, we still feel like we have something to prove, maybe, and we desperately want to win. Olaf Abel can win the match for the Spaniards at the 15th. Maybe two wins in one day over Ballesteros and Olafabel was an impossible task for Love and Kite. Now there's just one match left alive. Faldo not about to back down from Azinger at the 17th. With that brilliant shot, Faldo makes birdie to even the match. But the morning's fog delay has made it impossible to finish before nightfall. The decision is made to complete the match in the morning. The Europeans enjoy an overnight lead of one point, and there's a real possibility Faldo could help them stretch it to two first thing in the morning. There is no fog to disrupt play on Saturday. Another crowd of 30,000 gathers early to see nine matches decided. First order of business, the nerve-wrenching one-hole finish to the Azinger couple's Faldo-Montgomery match. After his birdie at 17, Faldo has the honor. And under extreme pressure conditions, he splits the fairway. After Montgomery puts his tee shot in play, Fred Couples faces the toughest tee shot at the Belfry. Couples' hook is in the water, and that leaves it up to Azinger. <laughs> Laying alone to all intents and purposes, Azinger strikes it dead center. After Colin Montgomery finds the water from the right rough, it's Faldo's turn to feel the pressure. He's on the green, but way short. Now Azinger. Paul's intensity is obvious. As is his relief when his shot finds the green. Faldo has almost no hope of birdie. And after a weak approach putt, par is no certainty either. Now Azinger can win the match with a birdie. It's a game effort, and Faldo concedes Azinger's par. Now Faldo with the 12 footer for par to have the match. ranks for the moment as the world's best player won't beat himself. But Azinger has given him all he can handle for 18 holes. It's a hard-earned have on both sides. As the players prepare for morning foursomes matches, Europe retains its one-point lead. Now it's time for more foursomes play, and both captains rely on hot teams. In the first match, Watkins and Pavin for the U.S. and Faldo and Montgomery for Europe. Azinger and Couples remain a team and face Woosnam and Langer in the second match. Ray Floyd and Payne Stewart, rested on Friday afternoon, will play a pair of English rookies in Peter Baker and Barry Lane. And for the third straight time, Kite and Love tangle with Ballesteros and Olaf Fabel. Ballesteros gets off to a rousing start on the par four first hole. Out on the course from the rough at the ninth hole, Ray Floyd. Floyd knocks it close and will leave Payne Stewart with a short birdie putt. 
Stewart's make gives his side a three-up lead from European rookies Peter Baker and Barry Lane. Playing behind Stewart are Tom Kite and Davis Love. Kite's fine approach cuts the Spaniards' lead in the match to one up. At the par 3 14th, Nick Faldo's second. Faldo and Montgomery lead Watkins and Pavin, three up. One down to the Spaniards, Tom Kite goes for the green at number 10. It's a gutsy play, but it lands him in the bunker. Olathabel answers Kite's challenge. The friendly kick sets up an eagle chance for Ballesteros. Ahead at number 13, Langer and Woosnam are all square with Couples and Dazinger. Langer's strong approach shot helps the Europeans go one up. At the 10th, the gallery salutes the tee shot of Ola Fabel. Davis Love is left with a scary bunker shot, downhill with water behind the hole. Up ahead, Lanny Watkins, down three at the 15th, charges a birdie putt. It won't fall, and Watkins and Pavin go down to a three and two defeat at the hands of Faldo and Montgomery. Paul Azinger needs this par putt to have the 13th. Not to be. Azinger and Couples go one down. Ballesteros at the 12th. The long birdie ignites the crowd and keeps Love and Kite two down. Peter Baker has a short par putt at 13. Painful miss. He and Lane are now three down. Ballesteros and Olathabel are fighting off Kite and Love. For Seve, the object is to live down bitter memories of Kiowa 1991. We, we came back to Europe with uh without the cap, and uh, this one thing uh, that uh, we didn't like it, and <laughs> it was very painful, and, uh, and we still remember that, so we don't want to have that kind of pain again. Ballesteros and Olathabel have inflicted much more pain than they've received. Before Friday, they'd lost only once in 10 years together. Now Kite and Love are trying to beat them for the second time in 24 get it, hours. Get it, get it. Yeah. Love's birdie at 13 cuts the lead to one hole. Up ahead, Raymond Floyd has a birdie putt at 16. No birdie here, but good enough to close out the team of Baker and Lane, who never got it going. At the 17th, Azinger and Couples need birdie to stay alive. Paul's putt burns the hole, but Langer and Guzman prevail two and one. Ballesteros can finish Kite and Love at the 17th. Now suddenly, there's a threat of a rout by the Europeans. They've taken the morning foursomes three to one, and their overall lead in the competition is three points. Down seven and a half, four and a half, the Americans have an afternoon's work ahead of them. Tom Watson plays a hunch in the afternoon, sending out John Cook for his first ever Ryder Cup match with the eternally optimistic Chip Beck. They draw the team of Faldo and Montgomery, who have won twice and halved in their first three matches. In the second match, Italy's Costantino Rocca sees his first action, paired with Mark James against Pavin and Gallagher. 
Fred Couples is still looking for his first win. Ian Dazinger will take on Woosnam and the red-hot Peter Baker. And in a big shock, Seve Ballesteros has asked to sit out the afternoon matches, and Bernard Gallagher has reluctantly agreed, instead pairing Olafabel with Swede Joachim Hegman. Baldo comes out firing on the first hole. It's a monster birdie putt, but John Cook has a chance to have from inside him. Cook coolly rolls in his first Ryder Cup putt, and a message is sent. At the second hole, Corey Pavin's approach. Pavin birdies to put his team one up. At the fourth hole, Faldo just over the green. Another birdie for Faldo. And again, John Cook is called upon to respond. Tom Watson had visited Cook and Beck on the practice tee and told them the team needed their point. Cook was listening. Pavin and Gallagher are already two up at the fifth. Get in. Get in. Slam dunk, and the crowd is stunned. But it's an eagle, too, something that's getting to be old hat for Pavin. First, he flew one in at the 72nd hole at the Honda. Then he aced the 16th at Augusta. And now this eagle all in the span of 18 months, all of them in the hole on the fly. Corey Pavin is four under through five holes. Peter Baker and Ian Woosnam are one up at the eighth over Couples and Dasinger. Baker's birdie stretches the margin to two up. Gallagher and Pavin can stretch their lead to four up at the ninth. They've played the front nine better ball in six under par. Ray Floyd at the sixth. He and Payne Stewart are already three up over Ola Thabel and Hegman. So two of the matches are routes by the Americans. Peter Baker at the ninth with another birdie putt. Baker and Woosnam go three up over Couples and Dazinger. Haven for birdie at the tenth. Haven and Gallagher can do no wrong. They'll go five up. Right behind them at the 10th tee, Azinger and Couples are three down and desperate. Azinger's wet, and now it's up to Couples. Same spot. For these two Americans, defeat is now imminent. Costantino Roca, playing in his first Ryder Cup match, must be wondering what it takes to win. Roca's birdie at the 13th is too little too late against Haven and Gallagher, who win the match five and four. Faldo, one down at the 15th, needs par to have Cook and Beck. He does what's needed, and that match is very much alive. Baker has a putt to win his team's match at 13. Baker and Woosnam have blitzed Azinger and Couples, a team that figured to put up more of a fight. Their loss adds pressure to Cook and Beck. Montgomery fires for the pin at 16. A birdie here would draw Montgomery and Faldo all square with Cook and Beck. It looked to be in the hole, but only caught the corner. 
No one is more shocked to be trailing in this match than Montgomery. He and Faldo still one down, now with just two to play. At the 17th, Faldo's approach. Faldo's expression belies the quality of the shot. Now he has a chance to square the match. Back-to-back -back lip outs for Faldo and Montgomery, and the Americans still lead going to the 18th tee. First, John Cook. Yeah, Johnny! A tremendous drive under pressure for Cook. His is better off than Beck's. Now Faldo. It's through the fairway, but better than Montgomery's. Cook will approach first with a four iron. And the Ryder Cup rookie's approach shot settles 10 feet from the hole. Now Faldo must make birdie and hope that Cook will miss. There's no question who the horse is on this team. But Faldo leaves himself outside of Cook and will need to make his putt. After a moment's reflection, Faldo and Montgomery concede the match. Cook and Beck have pulled off a huge upset and accept the heartfelt appreciation of their teammates. Floyd and Stewart can't quite yet finish off Olafabel and Hegman. They're at the 15th, and Stewart needs Birdie to have the hole. Stewart's putt puts him and Floyd three up with three to play. The worst they can do is have the match. Stewart is another American who remembers the disappointment of 89, and he cannot help but celebrate here. On to the 16th, where things look bleak for Ola Thabel. He needs Birdie to extend the match. Could things slip away? Stewart and Floyd have to be wondering. At the 17th, Hegman's approach. Another great chance for Birdie. And the pressure is clearly on the Americans. Hegman's ball is in front of the hole, and the Swede decides to mark it to give Olafabel a clear shot at the pin. Now there's a vote of confidence. shot making. Ola Thabel hits the pin. So it's a sure birdie for Ola Thabel and Hegman. Stewart must make his birdie putt or go to the 18th just one up. Yeah. Payne Stewart's putt has stopped the European rally and earned a critical point for the United States. The Americans have won three of the four Saturday afternoon matches to give themselves a fighting chance on Sunday. 
Now, with the 12 singles matches yet to come, the Europeans lead, but only by a single point. With 12 points at stake, Ryder Cup Sundays are unpredictable. Ryder Cup Sunday 1993 begins with the chance that Scotsman Sam Torrance will withdraw due to an infected toe. Under Ryder Cup rules, USA captain Tom Watson has put into an envelope the name of a player who will sit out in the event that Torrance can't play. That player is eight-time Ryder Cup veteran Lanny Watkins, who has actually volunteered to be the one to sit out. When Torrance can't play, his name is paired with Watkins, and the match is considered halved. Each team gets half a point. I went out this morning for a fitness test with Bernard, and I couldn't have played without two injections, one before I started, one after nine, and uh, we brought Tom in, showed him the toe, and he's brand new with it, fine. I offered for him to put me in there because uh, I'm a captain's pick. Uh, I've played three matches so far this week. Uh, a lot of the other guys that, uh, you know, they, they spent two years earning their way on the team. I think they deserve the chance to play today. When I told Lanny, he was, uh, he was pretty nonchalant about it, but about a half hour later, he said, Tom, um, I, I didn't realize how much this is going to hurt. But on the other note, uh, I told my team, I thought about it, and I, I told my team, I said, when you're out there having a little bit of a problem out there today, just think about Lanny Watkins and what type of fighter he is, and uh, that'll help you uh, get through that tough spot. There are still 11 points available. The United States needs at least six of them for a tie to retain the cup. Europe must win five and a half for the outright win they need to recapture the cup. Lee Jansen, already two down to Colin Montgomery, has a putt for birdie at the fourth. Jansen cuts the deficit in half. Payne Stewart gets off to a quick start against Mark James. This approach at number two sets up a birdie, and Stewart is already two up. At the par five fourth hole, Barry Lane goes for it in two. That sets up a two putt birdie and a one up lead for Lane over Chip Beck. At the second hole, Jim Gallagher Jr. An easy birdie for Gallagher and a quick two up lead over Ballesteros. Peter Baker at the eighth hole for birdie. Baker is now one up over Corey Pavin. Ian Woosnam, one up over Fred Couples, bids for birdie at the 11th. Woosnam has never won a Ryder Cup singles match in five previous tries, but now he has Couples two down. Joachim Hegman is all square with John Cook. Until this birdie at the 8th. Haven fights back against Peter Baker. The birdie at nine gets their match back to all square. Couples mounts his rally against Woosnam at the par four 13th. Birdie for Couples. He's just one hole back. Nick Faldo and Paul Azinger comprise the day's final pairing. Aldo wins the second hole to get back to all square. Peter Baker for birdie at the 10th to go one up over Pavin. Europe now leads in six matches, more than enough to win the cup. Baker's role is an improbable one. He spent all night at the hospital after rushing there with his 11-month-old daughter, who's taken a high fever. The American team, informed of Baker's vigil, sent him a telegram of support. Now the daughter has improved and Baker is on the verge of becoming a hero. Barry Lane, two up over Chip Beck at the 13th hole. Lane makes birdie to go three up over Beck with five holes to play. Fred Couples at the par five 15th, 240 yards out. 
Couples has already birdied the 13th to get within one hole of Woosnam. And here, Couples will make a two-putt birdie to get to all square. Payne Stewart is pouring it on at the eighth. Stewart's third birdie of the day will put him four up over Mark James. Hagman clings to a one-up lead. But a three-putt bogey at the 12th drops him to all square with John Cook. Chip Beck is two down to Lane with a chance at Eagle on the 15th. Lane had been three up through 13, but now the lead is just one. Peter Baker has the putter going. Another birdie at 14, and the sleepless Baker is two up over Pavin. Woosnam and Couples all square at 17, but Woozy has missed the green. Woosnam's chip somehow stays out, but he'll settle for the have and head to 18 all square. Colin Montgomery is all square with Lee Jansen at the 15th, but Montgomery has an eagle putt. It's good. And Jansen now must make his 10-footer to have the hole. Now Couples at the tough 18th. It's virtually the same shot he faced four years earlier in his match against Christy O'Connor Jr. That time he had missed the green and made a bogey that cost him the match. This time, a more battle-tested couples proves equal to the task and puts the pressure back on Woosnam. Back to Jansen for Eagle at the 15th to have Montgomery. Jansen falls one back with just three to play. Now Woosnam at 18. And the little Welshman answers couples with a great shot of his own. Corey Pavin still battling the hot putting Baker. A birdie at 16, and Pavin is just one down. Back at the 18th, Couples lines up his birdie putt. It's a regulation par, but it leaves Woosnam with a putt to win the match. Meanwhile, Tom Kite has locked horns with Bernhard Langer. Kite's birdie at nine is his second in a row and puts him two up. Ian Woosnam surveys his putt to win at 18. for the match. Woosnam has run it way by the hole. Now he faces the prospect of losing to Fred Couples. It's been a terrific match, and a have is a fitting end when both players have held up so well under such extraordinary pressure. Tom Kite wants to put the hammer down on Longer. He's going for the 10th green. And he's reached it. Up ahead, Barry Lane, who had led by three with five to play, is all square at 18 and in trouble against Chip Beck. 
And Lane goes the way of so many other Ryder Cup rookies before him. Into the water at 18. Haven, one down at 17, hasn't quit his battle with Peter Baker. Haven can't quite coax it in. He's one down with one to play. Chip Beck prepares to finish off Barry Lane. It's plenty good enough to force a concession. Beck wins one up, completing a remarkable comeback. Beck's point evens the score at nine and a half points aside. Of the nine remaining matches, three are all square, and each team leads in three others. Lee Jansen needs to win 18 to have his match. He hits a fine pressure shot. Baker has a putt at 17 for birdie that would win the match. Haven lives to play the 18th. At 18, Montgomery is in with par, so Jansen needs a birdie to have the match. Joachim Hegman has a par putt to stay all square with John Cook at 17. He pours it in, and another match heads to the 18th. Now at the 18th green, Baker needs just a two putt to win. And why not? On this day, Peter Baker can't miss and he beats Pavin two down with a masterful display of putting. Costantino Roca is all square with Davis Love at the 15th. A birdie, and the rookie from Italy goes one up with three holes to play. Payne Stewart can close out Mark James at the 16th. Stewart has more than atoned for his slow start on Friday morning, winning three straight matches. John Cook. One down to Hegman has found the fairway bunker at 18. Cook is wet, but Hegman has problems of his own. He's driven through the fairway, nearly into the water, and has an awkward shot. Hegman enjoys his moment, and when Cook concedes, it triggers an explosion in the gallery. Ray Floyd and Ola Fabel are back at 13. When Ray starts strutting toward the hole, you just know the putt will drop. Floyd's birdie puts him two up. At 17, Roca has Love one down, but faces a pressure putt to have the hole. Roca succumbs to Ryder Cup pressure. Love, on the advice of Captain Watson, stays behind to practice putting, giving Roca time to stew on the 18th tee. Floyd at the par 3 14th. Hard to believe it stayed out. Floyd will win the hole, his third straight. Nick Faldo and Dazinger have been battling along, and Faldo needs this for par at 13. He and Dazinger are all square. Now Davis Love III is ready to tee off at 18, all square in his match with Constantino Roca. Oh, 
He rips it down the middle of the fairway. At 14, Faldo tries to recover. Sheer perfection. It's only the second ace in Ryder Cup history. It puts Faldo one up in his match. At the 18th, the pressure is on Roca. The Italian bails out way right into the gallery. Meanwhile, Faldo draws well-earned tribute from the gallery at 14. It's the fifth ace of his brilliant career, all of them with his six iron. Against Gallagher, Ballesteros tries to stay alive at 16. For once, this Ryder Cup warhorse has come up short. Today, he falls to Jim Gallagher Jr., 3 and 2. Roca has a very difficult second shot at 18. The crowd helps it over the water. But Love is tactically in the driver's seat. Davis's shot is on the green, but spins back away from the hole. Roca's not dead yet. Back at 15, Longer needs a miracle. On this day, Tom Kite was too much, and Longer falls five and three. Roca's third at 18. He scares the hole, but has a tough comebacker. Roca's is a critical point. Members of both teams mass around the 18th green to watch the conclusion of the match. Love's long birdie try to win the hole. Not over yet. Now the Italian for par, with memories of his bogey at 17 still lingering. Cup is open for love. Parr will win the hole and the match. Yeah! Another comeback win for the USA. Ray Floyd has a short putt to have the 16th hole. That little putt guarantees Floyd at least a have in his match and ensures the United States will retain the Ryder Cup. Love's comeback over Roca was indispensable. Well, I knew if I lost my point, it was going to be big because, uh, you know, they expected me to get out there and win it. And, uh, you know, I didn't make any putts, really. I made that one on the last hole that was really the only putt I made all day, so... I'm just excited to, to have contributed and um, be a part of this team. And, you know, Lanny, Lanny put himself in the envelope to, um, to not play. And, and I thought about Lanny all day trying to hang in there for him.
Faldo and Basinger play on. All square at the 17th. Faldo's magnificence continues, but up ahead, after having hit in the water at 18, Ola Thobble concedes to Floyd. That makes the 51-year-old Floyd the man with the honor of having clinched both the cup and victory in the matches for the American team. It's been a day when the crucial contributions came from the most senior members of the team. First, there was Lanny Watkins, volunteering to sit out so that others could have their chances at glory. Then there was Captain Tom Watson, using Wadkin's sacrifice to spark his team. And finally, there was Raymond Floyd, a winner in his last three matches, clinching the cup with his victory over Ola Thabo. Azinger and Faldo wait in the 18th fairway, playing now just for pride. Azinger needs birdie to have the match. Faldo can win with the birdie. Faldo strikes his ball onto the upper tier, then reels it back toward the hole. Azinger doesn't want to settle for less than birdie. Get him, Zay! Faldo will putt first. If he makes it, he wins the match. Hazinger now has one putt to win the hole and have the match. Azinger's rally sums up the entire day's effort by the American team, an effort they can all look back on with pride. Final score, United States 15, Europe 13. When it's over, Raymond Floyd proclaims this his final Ryder Cup competition. Lanny Watkins is saluted as a perfect future candidate for captain. And Tom Watson receives the cup from Prince Andrew and holds it aloft for the honor of his American team. We've all had the privilege of watching three days of great match play competition among, among the top professionals of the world. And although our U.S. team leaves with the Ryder Cup as victors of this year's matches, we've all shared in a wonderful adventure this week watching outstanding golf played in a truly sporting and professional manner. May I extend our congratulations to the European team for providing such a great match. And may I congratulate my team for retaining the trophy. In closing, I want to relate a few of the words of a great U.S. President, Theodore Roosevelt. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbled.
or the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, and spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither de defeat or victory. <laughs>